morning. Got your coffee? Got some more questions. You try to tell somebody about Jesus, and they say they don't believe in the Bible. What do you do? I'm afraid so many Christians today have been taught this idea that faith is just this blind trust, and if you just can't, if you just won't accept the Bible, then there's nothing we can say. And I've been with pastors who have said the very same thing. Look, if you can't, if they can't agree that the Bible is the word of God, then there's nothing you can do. I disagree with that. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. There is massive evidence in our universe, all around us, that points to God. I, those of you that know me know I, I love to read, I, and I read a variety of things. I, I like biographies and science. I'm a big science nut. But I've been reading uh, some books by J. Warner Wallace. He is a homicide cold case detective in California. He was an atheist, and he's, his journey to Christ has resulted in two books. The first one he wrote was Cold Case Christianity, and it's more biographical, uh, biographical, I'll get the right word here in a minute, um, uh, as far as his writing, but to help Christians to understand, he's written a second book, and, I, and I'm about to finish it, and it's, it's called Cold, uh, God's Crime Scene. And in this one, he actually takes how they, how they work evidence um, and, and how that applies to identifying God. He talks about uh, being in the room or out of the room. He talks about when they go to a scene, they look, does the evidence that they find point to whatever happened being from something or somebody inside the room, or does it point to somebody being outside the room? In each chapter, he covers a different piece of that and what they determine. This is his, at the, at the end of all this, this is his... Uh, outline of the suspect for the creation of the universe. And he says our suspect is we, what we know now, the cause of our universe, our suspect is external to the universe, non-spatial, atemporal, and non-material. He's uncaused, powerful enough to create everything we see in the universe, specifically powerful enough to produce a universe fine-tuned for life, intelligent and communicative, creative and resourceful, conscious mind, free to choose and create personally, the personal source of moral truth and obligation, and the standard for good by which we define evil. That's a pretty good suspect description when talking about is there evidence for our creation from outside, or the evidence we see in creation, does it point to creation from inside or outside? And I, it's really remarkable how he sets all this up. And I want to just read another passage to you from this, and then I want to take a couple of things, and we're going to we're going to go. He says he talks about God being this divine intruder, and why people that deny God have trouble with that, and it's because we claim this is our universe. He said the divine intruder we've described as a source for all the cosmological, biological, mental, and moral evidence in the universe is the creator of our home. It is His house and he's still the primary owner and inhabitant. In our limited self-focused view, the reality we've imagined this to be our universe, when in fact it is his. We are his guests. We are the ones living in the universe God created, resisting the existence of our creator and landlord and viewing him as the intruder in our lives. And this is how he surmises some of this. He says, as an atheist, I was very comfortable as the captain of my own ship. My life was fulfilling and rewarding. I had been a police officer for nearly 10 years and was used to being in charge in difficult situations. I didn't like intrusion. There was no room for God in my life. I am not a theist today because I was raised by believers. I wasn't. I'm not a believer because I was hoping for heaven or afraid of hell. I had no sense of value for either. I am not a theist because I was trying to fill a void or satisfy a need. I felt none. I believe God exists because the evidence leaves me no reasonable alternative. 
Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. We have to, as children of God, move past the notion that if it's not in the Bible, there's no way to show, to prove, or confirm God. It's all around us. The evidence is everywhere. And J. Warner Wallace talks about his journey to God began because of evidence, his understanding of how to evaluate a crime scene, how to evaluate evidence, made him then take those same talents, those same skills, and apply those to the universe. That led him ultimately to pick up a Bible and use the laws of evidentiary to prove or disprove that the Bible was true, and in the end he came to salvation knowledge. It did not start in the Word of God. It did not start with his presupposition that the Bible is the Word of God. And there are so many things that we can use. Ravi Zacharias was responding to an objection sent to him that says, there cannot be a God because there is too much evil in this world. His response was very simple and one that we can use. He said, when you say there is too much evil in the world, you assume there is good. When you assume there's good, you assume there's such a thing as a moral law on the basis of which to differentiate between good and evil. But if you assume a moral law, you must posit a moral law giver. But that's who you're trying to disprove and not prove. Because if there's no moral law giver, there's no moral law. If there's no moral law, there's no good. If there's no good, there's no evil. What is your question? Albert Norton said this, the fact of evil in the world is perhaps the primary reason that people start down the road of concluding there is no God. But God is implied in the very act of making the distinction between good and evil. There are many ways that we can, we can draw people to consider the fact that God exists, God is real, and that ultimately his word has been pinned down in the Bible and we can trust it. 1 Peter 3, 15 and 16 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you, as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ, your good lifestyle in Christ. We are to be ready always to give an answer for the hope that lies within us. A reason, a reason for the hope. Reason requires evidence. Reason requires something more than, well, it's just faith. You just have to believe. You just have to believe. Listen, we are in a world where people are taught, and there's a drive in our schools to remove the notion of God being a viable option of reality. They are taught science is the king, and science disproves God. The whole religion is for weak-minded people that need some kind of crutch, and yet the very laws of nature point to design and order that can only come out of a mind that has design and order. And there's so many ways to deal with this. We must move past this notion that, well, it's just faith. It's just faith. In the end, that is true. It is faith. We either exercise faith, trust, that first there was nothing, then there was something, and then it exploded, and now there's everything. Or we have to have faith, trust, that an all-powerful, ever-existent being, God, spoke everything into creation and established the order thereof. And there are ways to do that without just backing away and saying, well, if you don't believe, there's just nothing we can say. That's convenient for us because that removes the responsibility to go farther with somebody in our minds. But the problem is, this is God's place. This is God's world. 
Psalm 24 says the earth, verse 1 says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. John 1, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. This is his. And if he created it, and he created us, then, he be then we belong to him. He has the right to share with us, to tell us, to command us, to do whatever he decides to do. And he tells us to be ready to give a reason, always ready to give a reason for the hope that lies within us. And this hope, this faith that we have, is not blind. It comes from evidence and substance. So let's learn that evidence and that substance so we can articulate to people why we believe in Christ, why we believe there is a creator God, and why we are driven to share his love with others. Father, help us to remember that as Jesus walked this earth, he used earthly principles to teach heavenly truths we have to learn to do the same thing. Help us to study and read and see how your son walked on this earth and how he taught others so we can emulate that and do the same thing. Help us to learn how to identify where someone is in their knowledge and their, in their ability to grapple with the things that belong to you, to find where they're at and start there and lead them to Jesus. When Philip met the eunuch, he began where he was and preached unto him, Jesus, help us to do that same thing. Father, we love you and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Enjoy your coffee. Ponder the reasons why you believe and then share that with everyone you can find. See you tomorrow morning. No, Monday morning.